Hello and welcome to this short video on Secure Lab data. Data held in the Secure Lab at the UK Data Service are those which are deemed by the depositor to be too sensitive and detailed to be made available by other means. One reason may be that the geographical units can be very detailed. This, coupled with other detailed variables, can make a data set highly disclosive. These data are not downloadable and are only available to researchers who have successfully applied for access and have had their applications approved by the data owners. Researchers must also attend and pass a safe researcher training course and be able to access the data from a suitable environment that meets the UK Data Services security requirements. Only then can they be granted access to Secure Lab. It is worth noting that some of our Secure Lab datasets are available in a less detailed form by a download. This means that you can potentially access the data much sooner. You should only use Secure Lab data if you cannot carry out your research without it. Here is our website where you can search our data catalogue. If you're looking for data on a specific subject, you can start your search by typing keywords into the search box. Today, as we want to look specifically at what data is in Secure Lab, I won't do this, but will simply click here with nothing in the field. You can see that there are a total of 7,773 results. If we go to the access facet on the left, we can see that by choosing controlled, we can narrow the search to those 200 data sets that are held in Secure Lab. As you move down the page, you will see that the results we have generated are all labeled Secure Access. If we were to go through every one of the 200 results, we would see a few results for safe room access too but we're not concerned with those as part of this video. As you can see, there are data for a wide variety of subject areas, including labor force, skills, households, social housing. You can also see that there are several pages of results. Let's have a look at the next page. Here we have the annual business survey. The ABS covers production, construction, distribution and service industries, which represents about two thirds of the UK economy in terms of gross value added, GVA. The ABS provides a number of high level indicators of economic activity, such as the total value of sales and work completed by businesses, the value of purchases of goods, materials and services, stocks, capital expenditure and total employment costs. We also have the wealth and assets survey which aims to address gaps identified in data about the economic well-being of households by gathering information on the level of assets, savings and debt, saving of retirement, how wealth is distributed among our households or individuals, and factors that affect financial planning. Let's have a look at the next page of results. Here we have the Millennium Cohort Study. The MCS is a large-scale, multi-purpose, longitudinal data set providing information about babies born at the beginning of the 21st century, their progress through life and their families. We can also see Understanding Society, which covers a range of topics including consumption and consumer behaviour, income, property and investments and savings, family life and marriage, social conditions and indicators, social behaviour and attitudes, labour and employment, general health and well-being. We don't have time to go through every page of results, but hopefully this is already giving you a sense of the variety of data sets held in Secure Lab. Let's have a look at the next page of results. On this page, we can see the UK Household Electricity and Activity Survey and the Crime Survey for England and Wales, amongst others. Let's now have a closer look at a catalogue record. In this case, the Business Expenditure on Research and Development Survey. Selecting any data set from the list of results generated provides you with further information. Looking at the details shows us things like the study number, DOI number, who collected the data and the principal investigator, which in this case was the Office for National Statistics. The next section shows the depositor, data collector and sponsor. Below that is the citation that should be used for any work that Secure Lab users do using this dataset. And below that is the copyright holder. Next, we have a note on some of the broad topics covered, a thesaurus search on some keywords, and for an overview of the dataset and some background information, there is the abstract. 
Moving further down the page, we have information on the relevant spatial units, the observation units, population, the number of units involved, and the method of data collection, and more besides. Finally, there is also information on addition history. Next, we'll open the documentation tab. Here we can see all documentation available for the data set. This can be extremely useful once you start working with the data. In this example, we can see there are eight pieces of documentation, including variable labels, metadata, survey questionnaires, and data dictionaries. The final tab is for resources, which you may find useful. Here you can find links to other studies, case studies, and publications. Once you have decided that you would like to access a data set, you should click the Access Data button. This will guide you through the process of application. It is worth noting that to access Secure Lab data, you will need to submit a project application, and if you haven't done so already, achieve accredited researcher status. Part of this process will involve mandatory attendance on a day-long training course, usually held in London. If you would like to get a feel for the layout of Secure Lab, please watch our How to Log into Secure Lab video. If you would like some tips on how to get the best out of Secure Lab, please watch our short How to Use Secure Lab Efficiently video. I hope this brief introduction to the kinds of data available in Secure Lab has been useful. If you need to get in touch, here are some of the ways that you can do that. The best option is via one of the contact forms on the website, as your query will go directly to the relevant team.